Down in the inner prison cells of the magic island of Euclidia, the little Gregory party is beginning to realize that their escape from the island will not be as easy as it was the first time. Their lives are apparently in no immediate danger, though the Euclidians have many ways of making life unpleasant for their prisoners. And one of these methods is now being tried on Captain Tex Bradford. When the captain went into the steel corridor to answer a knock at the door, Joan felt that something was wrong, as the Euclidians do not knock on prisoners' doors. Her fears were well-founded, for Tex was slow in returning, failed to answer their calls, and then a Euclidean ray gun was heard. We find Mrs. Gregory, Jerry, and Joan standing over the unconscious captain as he lies in a crumpled heap on the floor of the corridor. Oh, Tex, Tex, what have they done to you? One of those ray guns. I could hear it plain as day. We know that, Jerry. The important question is, what type of ray gun? You know something of these guns and their actions, Joan. What would you say? The reaction is the same to all types of ray guns. There is no way to determine how long the captain will remain asleep. Asleep? Are you sure that's all he is? Joan, are you positive Tex is only asleep? To be sure, Mother. Surely you must know something of the action of the human body, even in a world so woefully lacking in scientific understanding as yours. And the beat of a pulse must be the same, whether it beats in California or on Euclidia. Oh, pretty wise, aren't you, Joan? Well, well maybe we should have noticed that ourselves. Well, of course we should have, Jerry. But I'm so nervous I'm not thinking clearly. Well, gee whiz, how long do those big guns keep you asleep? The larger ones will incapacitate the average human for the space of an earthly revolution. Twenty-four hours? As time is computed in your world, yes, Mother. Well, I wish you'd get it into your head that we're figuring things our way. And when you mean 24 hours, say 24 hours. Don't wander off taking the sun for a stroll around the earth to let us know how long you mean. If your understanding persists in wallowing in the depths of such ridiculous child's play, I will confine my remarks to the more simple combinations of phraseology. Yes, do that. And stick to what we're talking about. Joan, dear, is there nothing we can do to make the captain more comfortable? But he is not uncomfortable, Mother. Well, it seems rather awful to me... But if you say he isn't suffering any discomfort, we may as well carry him to the bed in his cell and let him rest easily until this wears off. Okay, Mrs. Gregory. You take his feet and Joan and I will take his head. We will find him very heavy. <laughs> Tex isn't a small man to begin with. And now that he's in a sound sleep, why, why I, I can't even move his legs. Mm, I'll bet you can't. I'm not having any luck just trying to raise one of his arms. We will not be able to move the captain for some time. What's the matter, Joan? Magnetic paint. Magnetic paint? Where? On the captain's hands and face and clothing. Oh, I know that. But where did it come from? Yes, Joan, dear. How did that magnetic paint get on, Tex? We've been right with him, or at least one of us has, every minute since we came in here. Yeah. How do you answer that one? Was not the captain alone when he came out here to answer a knock on the door? Yes, he was, but that was only for a minute. Sixty seconds encompass a definitely valuable <laughs> element of time to the active mind. Well, maybe I'm a little slow upstairs, but I still don't see how Tex got himself all covered with a static enamel and laid out here on the floor all in one minute and without even opening that door. Opening the door. I wonder. You are thinking very clearly now, Mother. Well, how do you figure anything so clearly thought out in that? Mother was mentally questioning the opening of the door. Yes, Joan, I was. That door opens in, toward us. And from the position in which Tex is lying, I should say that he could not have opened the door. We would have heard it close again. Golly, Whiskers, you're right. I believe Mother is correct. That door was not opened. Then where did that paint come from? Yeah, and how did they shoot him with that ray gun? The paint would be very simple. As you have observed, this transparent steel is fabricated with countless small holes. The paint might well have been sprayed through one or more of those holes. Why, so it might. It might, but I'll bet it wasn't. Jerry, you do not know what you are saying. Let Jerry advance his theory if he has one, Joan, dear. Thanks, Mrs. Gregory. Well, I didn't exactly mean that the paint didn't come through one of those holes. I meant that I didn't think it was sprayed there by anybody. But how else? Oh, you mean the paint was injected through the steel by some automatic device when the door opened. That's my idea. And you are more than possibly correct, Jerry. Though if you are, we are in a more dangerous position than I could have believed. Well, come on, give us the bad news. I believe that Captain Bradford was sprayed with magnetic paint and that the ray gun was fired when he touched that door to open it and that no human hands had a part in it. Then, then that is the Euclidean method of guaranteeing our safe confinement here. 
But why should they bother to do that with guards roaming their corridors? We couldn't go far enough to do their mad island any damage. They don't take any chances here. Maybe they wanted to take a little nap and wanted to make sure we'd all stay here while they slept. Hardly anything so elementary as that, Jerry, though you made a step in the proper direction with your reasoning. Well, go ahead, Joan. What's your idea? It is more than an idea. I think the reason we are now being guarded entirely by scientific devices is necessitated by the absence of all human agencies. Absence? From where? I believe we are now the only human beings on Euclidia. What, Joan, dear? I mean just that, Mother. I believe we are alone on the island. But these 250 Euclidians, or whatever they have in this crazy place, where did they all go at once? I'm sure it isn't obvious to me, Joan. We are prisoners here, perhaps the most utterly helpless, hopeless prisoners in the world today. We can't harm them, and G-47 knows that. Why should they escape from us? Not from us but from some outside danger threatening the island. You mean somebody might be attacking the scientists right now? I mean someone might be attacking this island, believing the scientists were here, yes. But, Joan, what you're suggesting, we may be here all alone, somewhere in the depths of this fantastic island, and at this moment the island is being threatened with destruction. It is possible, Mother. But, gee, Mrs. Gregory... Here's Captain Bradford lying on the floor, sound asleep and magnetized there. We can't move him, and we couldn't get out of here if we did. Joan, surely you must be mistaken. Why do you say that, Mother? How often have you told us that Euclidia, this magic island, as Jerry named it, was impregnable, and that it was impossible for any nation in the world to destroy Euclidia with the weapons we now have? What about that? Yeah, answer that one, Cleostra, and let us in on the secret. I do not wish to be called Cleostra. Okay, Joan, then. But let's have the answer. We of Euclidia are the greatest scientific organization in the world, in the universe. And we have the utmost faith in our ability to cope with and overcome anything developed in the crude laboratories of your world. Huh. Nevertheless, our very perfection in science has taught us that the only true science in your world is mathematics. And your eccentric methods might lead to an accidental discovery of something unheard of in a colony where everything is perfection. That seems slightly ambiguous to me, dear. No, Mrs. Gregory. I know just what Joan means. She's afraid somebody in our world might stumble onto the answer just because he was a dumb amateur. And these guys here wouldn't be ready for it because it wasn't figured out like a smart scientist would do it. Then our position appears to be that of having no choice but to hope that nothing serious happens to this island. That is my view of the predicament. You sure take a sour look at it. And there's nothing we can do about it? Nothing, Mother. When we heard the tapping sound which Captain Bradford interpreted as a knock at this door, it was merely the automatic electrical devices actuated from the central control chamber, taking over their positions as mechanical guardians of our chambers. Then, then there wasn't anybody at the door at all? No one. Is there any way of being sure that the island is deserted except for ourselves? If the automatic controls are active, there is no Euclidean on the island. And to find out if these things are still working, we've got to open that door and get shot with a ray gun? No, that would be very silly, Jerry. It is the only way. The island is no longer moving. That would seem to indicate that it was impossible to change the location of the island quickly enough to escape the impending attack, and that the scientists have retreated to observe the action from the ocean floor city. From the what? The ocean floor city. Joan, these Euclidians have other quarters? To be sure. Under the ocean floor? Yes. It requires but a few hundred seconds for everyone on Euclidia to seek refuge in the walled city below the ocean floor. And the principal control and chemical systems are taken also. Entire rooms are submerged as units. Six hundred seconds is the time required, I believe. Oh, boy. Ten minutes to take everything valuable from this island. Into an underground town? I'm forced to believe that, Joan, after all the other things we've seen around here. But I'd, I'd just as soon not learn any more of the power of these men. It only makes our position worse. Our present position is not particularly enviable indeed. And then some. We're in plenty deep. We are on the ninth level of the island. That wasn't what I meant, but it'll do. I'm going to try opening that door. I wouldn't. No, Mother. I'm going to open that door. I can't stand helplessly still and let all these things around us go on merrily on their way. Well, the only difference will be that if you open that door, you'll be asleep. And you wouldn't know anything about all these things that are going to keep right on merrily on their way just the same. You will accomplish nothing, Mother. And as Jerry has said, 
We will be deprived of your conversation and advice. Conversation that doesn't accomplish any more than ours has done isn't very profitable. And I haven't a single word of advice to offer. More than that, I have a small idea. And the only way to put it into use is to open that door. Very well. Stand back, Jerry, so that we will not be put to sleep if Mother insists on doing this foolish thing. Okay, Joan. Go to it, Mrs. Gregory. Gee. Peculiar. Well? Was that your idea, Mrs. Gregory? Did you have it figured out? Well, I wasn't any too sure, Jerry. But the thought occurred to me that there was at least a possibility the ray gun could only act once. Of course. How stupid of you not to think of that, Jerry. Huh? Me? What about you? I was more at fault. Never mind worrying about who thought of it. We have the door open and nothing has happened to us. Now, what is the next move? Well, it's a cinch we can't all go out of here and leave text there on the floor alone. So how about John and I taking a quick look around some of these passageways before any of those Euclidians get back? I'm not sure, Jerry. I think it advisable, Mother. You remain with the captain, and Jerry and I will attempt to learn more of our position here. Very well, then. Oh, but you will be careful, dear woman. Hey, look out! Oh, close the door! What is it? Well, the water. Oh, help me slam this door, quick! Oh, it's too late, Jerry! It's too late! The magic island of Euclidia is an unusual, fascinating, and weird place. But what is more important to Mrs. Gregory and her party right now is the fact that the Magic Island is also a very dangerous place. Safely locked in their cells, 90 feet below the surface of the island, the Gregory party is planning escape when a knock is heard at the steel door outside their chambers. Captain Bradford goes to open the door, and a ray gun puts him to sleep for a good long time. When Patricia opens the same door a few minutes later, believing that the automatic ray gun would be good for only one shot, another steel partition at the end of the corridor gives way and a great wall of water is rushing at them as Jerry, Joan, and Pat try to close the door. It's too late, Jerry. It's too late. No, it isn't. Shove on this door. Just push hard, Mother. Oh, I'm, I'm doing my best. All together oh. now. Push. It's nearly shut. Come on. Push. Push. Can't we are. We're doing it. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh. Jerry, we did it. Oh, you're very strong, Jerry. Oh, sure I am. But that was plenty close. That water must have been coming down that hall five feet deep. Oh, yes, Jerry. It was all of that. It looked as high as my head. Well, we got it stopped anyway. The wall of water had not reached this door in the full force of its intensity, however. What appeared at some distance as a wall of water five feet high was in reality no more than 18 inches in depth at this door. Oh, all right, Joan. Go ahead and make it look as if we haven't done anything. No, Joe, Jerry. I'm sure Joan didn't mean it that way. Okay, forget it. Hey, look at Tex. He is in the water. Oh, he'll drown. We must get him up at once. Well, we can try. Come on, give me a hand. But that magnetism. Oh, I can raise his head from the water. Then the pull of magnetism is gone. Yeah. Say, that means those Euclidians are on the island again. Come on, let's get Tex up on a the bed. Then you and I can make a dash out and see what's going on. Tex is breathing evenly. He didn't get any of the water. No, Mother. His face was just above the water line. I was watching that. Oh, no wonder you weren't pushing on that door. Please, you do it. Help me get Tex up. Okay. Yes, Here we go. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, he sure is heavy. Jerry, how many times must I tell you that you should say surely is heavy and not sure is? There you are, Mrs. Gregory. I'm waiting around in water over my ankles, carrying the heavy end of a 200-pound man, and she takes time out to give me a, a grammar lesson. Sorry, Lord Jerry, but you stand it well. well. I can take it all right. Now, let's ease him down over here. Oh, this will do nicely. Oh, dear. Takes is heavy, isn't he? His normal weight would be greatly increased by the total relaxation induced as a logical effect of the ray. Yeah, and he weighs more, too. That is precisely what I said, it Jerry. It was not. You said... Oh, that... Jerry, Jerry. No more now, please. I'm sorry. You were always saying you were sorry, but you never make any attempt to improve your habitual method of procedure. What's the matter with my habitual method oh, of procedure? Oh, Jerry, please, please. Oh, sorry. I mean, oh, what's the use? Come on, Joan. We're not doing any good here. And Tex will be all right as long as he sleeps like that. 
Let's sneak out for a quick look around before any of those Euclidians get a chance to come down here and see how we're living under the water. But the water, Jerry, we will not be able to open the door now. You will have to postpone your look around. I don't think so. That water was shut off just as quickly as it started the flood. Why would you think that? You didn't hear a sound of it after we got the door shut, did you? Well, no, that's true. But these chambers are soundproof. You would not hear the water even if it still rushed at maximum velocity. Maybe and maybe not. I'm going to have a look. If you must be silly, I will accompany you, Jerry. Oh, will you two please be very careful? Oh, Jerry, the water. Yeah, it ain't. Not ain't, Jerry. No water either. Look on this floor. Why, the water is gone. What a marvelous place this island is. Come on, Joan. Yes. How long will you be gone? Oh, not long, Mother. Now, you'll be very careful, won't you, Jerry? We'll keep our eyes open. And take no chances. We will proceed with caution and deliberation. Yeah, and we'll be careful, too. Jerry Hall, why must you pretend to misunderstand me every time I use a word of more than one syllable? Because you try to show off by sticking a lot of big words in where one syllables would get it said better and quicker. Now we'll open this door. One moment, Jerry. Before you open the door, listen to be sure the water is gone from the corridor. I thought you said these doors were soundproof. Oh, that was silly of me, was it not? It was plenty. You're slipping, Joan. Continued association with you has done much hey, to under. Wait a minute. Association with me won't do you any harm. Now remember that you're used to being one of these smart Euclidians for a minute and tell me what to do before I open this door. It is never safe to guess on Euclidia. Oh, nothing is safe here. But this door can't do any more than spill a lot of water in on us. Here goes. Nothing. No water. Nothing in the corridor. Well, don't look so sorry about that. Come on, Joan. Hey. Well, listen to our steps. And our voices. We're in one of those echo chambers again. Yes, Jerry. And with all the electrical devices functioning as usual, we may consider it an established fact that the scientists have returned to the island. Then this thing gets worse. We may have to worry about some outsider blowing up this island without knowing we're here. And all the time keep right on worrying about what sort of tricks G-47 is going to pull. G-47 will spare no effort to secure Captain Bradford's formula. But, Jerry, will Mother think it right for us to leave her with the Captain? Your mother would have been about ready to kick us out of there if we hadn't gone when we did. Why, Jerry? Well, maybe you haven't seen enough of your mother in text to notice it. After all, you've only known your mother for the little while while we've been on this island. But if you could have seen them on the deck of the yacht when we were coming down here on those moonlit nights, oh, boy. I am not at all sure I understand what you mean. No, you wouldn't. These Euclidians you may know a whole lot more than I do about chemistry and electricity and all that. But they can use a little common sense. The possession of common sense would enrich you also, Jerry Hall? Golly, Whiskers, the girl submarine commander again. It is indeed, S-1. Is your position so enviable that you have time to stand with a gaping mouth and blinking eyes, Hall? No matter whether I've got time or not, I can't help feeling nervous every time one of you Euclidians jump through a steel wall at me without making any noise. The commander did not come through a wall, Jerry. She merely stepped around the corner of this hallway. You have not lost all sense of proportion, Cleostra, even though your wits are of necessity dulled by contact with young Paul. Never mind about sharpening up my wits. Tell us how we're going to get out of the hole we're in now. My mission is to guide you to a chamber even more strong and isolated than the one you have been occupying in comparative comfort. We are to be placed in solitary confinement? Precisely. Hey, quit pushing me around, Commander. What's the idea? You may learn a great deal more by keeping silent then will ever be revealed to you in response to your bane. Bane, huh? Oh, all right, all right. I'll go where you want me to. Only stop pushing. Is it permissible to inquire as to our ultimate disposition? It is not. You will enter this door. What a small room. Golly, whiskers, Commander. This thing isn't a big enough cell to keep anybody in. You will observe that the speaking voice is normal in tone. There is no communication possible to this chamber. Oh, and you wanted to get us in here quick and talk to us before G-47 discovered where we are? Precisely. Report on your position, condition, and what has transpired. Captain Bradford and Mrs. Gregory, my mother, are in water control cells on this level. Captain asleep with ray effects. Have been flooded but now drained. Have no plans. 
Captain will offer formula as last resort for our safety. Very good. You will act as I instruct you? Precisely. Yeah, that's it. And maybe that's a good word to use around here. We'll do what you tell us, precisely. Remarkable, if authentic, this attitude on your part, Hall. Oh, I'm all right. Now who's losing the time? Correct. I will proceed. This much I know of G-47's plans for you. Your lives are in no danger for the moment. Euclidians will devote all possible time to relocating island. Your numerous radio messages have attracted attention of Coast and Geodetic Survey. They cannot harm us but with instruments at their command, might well determine many points concerning Euclidia. The island was moved as I thought then. Movement was slight. Surface disturbance too great. G-47 now conferring with scientists. Have you definite estimate as to probable time before we will be the object of G-47's attentions? You should be comparatively certain of privacy for three rotations. Huh? Three which? Rotations, Jerry, of the Earth. Oh, oh. three days, huh? No. Days are periods of daylight on Euclidia, the complete cycle throughout any period from a given second one day to the comparable second the following or preceding day is a rotation. Oh, okay. Twenty-four hours then, huh? As time is roughly figured in your world, yes. Never mind the cracks about my world. What do we do, Commander? That you must plan for yourselves. I have given you three rotations of assured privacy. Must I do your thinking for you as well? We will evolve a plan. Yeah, we might even get an idea. Say, where's the other two members of Mrs. Gregory's crew? McLeod, the Scotch engineer, and the old Yep and Nope skipper. They are safely under guard aboard your boat. The boat is in the submerged lock? Precisely. Oh, and where are those little homing pigeons? G-47 has them in his private laboratory for personal study. Gee, sure looks like we'll have to do all this ourselves, Joan. I will be on my way. Do not speak as I leave. Golly, Whiskers, that girl sure comes and goes fast. The commander risked her life to bring that message to us. I know it. Boy, she's a swell girl, and is she good looking. If her beauty is so attractive to you, Jerry... Oh, forget that stuff, Joan. You don't have to worry about her. Gosh, she's 22 years old. But even if she is pretty old, she's all right. Do you prefer the commander to me? Huh? Jerry, I like you very much. Oh, okay, I like you too. But this is no time to tell you about that kind of stuff. We've got to get back to your mother and Captain Bradford. Will they be tickled when they hear we'll have about three days to figure our way out of this place? Three days? Golly, whiskers. I'll bet Tex can figure out how to be halfway to New York in that time. If he wakes up. If he wakes up? Yes, Jerry. The captain may sleep longer than we had thought. Yeah, he might. Hey, you're sure a hell.